this is Amy Harris Houck, and I am the head of research outreach and instruction for the UNCG University Libraries. And this is our webinar series, Research and Applications. Um, welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. Um, they'll be recorded in Meeting Center and placed on the library webpage, which is uncg.libguides.com slash webinars. Um, what else do you need to know? So today's session is on Open Education Resources, or OER, Opportunities. The webinar is being presented by Beth Bernhardt, UNCG Library's Assistant Dean for Collection Management and Scholarly Communications, and Janae Solomon, UNCG Library's Diversity Resident Librarian. So now I'm going to hand over the hosting ability to Beth and Janae and mute my mic, and they are going to take it away. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. There we go. Here we go. Well, hello. Welcome to um, our webinar on OER and opportunities. My name is Janae Solomon, and I am going to be with Beth Bernhardt. And um, starting off, we'll take you through a couple of um, resources and repositories, and then talk about upcoming opportunities in OER. So first, we're going to be covering what exactly are OERs, or Open Education Resources, and then second, why they're important, and then Finding how to find OER tools and repositories, taking you through the LibGuide and other sources, and then examples that um, have been used at UNCG in the past using OER, and then finally opportunities that are upcoming with how to incorporate OER. So uh, what exactly is an OER? An open educational resource, or OER, is really any type of material or resource, like an image, a text, an ebook, or a learning module or lecture slides, etc., used for teaching that is available in the public do domain that is free to use and or alter. So you'll see an example here of things that um, can be considered an OER and the different formats that they have, such as uh, in the curriculum, like syllabi and content modules, uh, videos, uh, images, textbooks, assignments, um, even software and calculators and um, things like art galleries and other, and, um, other things. Um, so when using the OER, um, it's, or, so when learning about OER, it's important to kind of understand what open means in terms of educational materials. So um, this is the OER framework that was created by David Wiley of Lumen Learning, who is an education fellow at Creative Commons, and he's a scholar in his own right about open education. Um, not OERs don't necessarily have to meet all the R's exactly, but it's rather a framework of how a specific OER material is used. So real quick, I'll just kind of take you through those five R's. Um, retain is the right to make, own, and control copies of the content. Reuse, the right to use content in a wide uh, range of ways using various formats. Revise is the right to adapt, adjust, modify, or alter the content itself. And then remixing is the right to combine the original or revised content with other content or open content available to create something new. Uh, and then finally, redistri redistribute is the right to share copies of the content, uh, original content or remix content, your revisions, and then remixes with others. Great. So um, why exactly is OER important? Uh, first and foremost, it provides a no-cost alternative to the required text. Um, as you'll see in the graph uh, right here from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it um, shows definitely how OER has, um, how cost of textbooks, I mean, has really gone even above the inflation. Right, and it's also um, gone way above the cost for med medical costs. 
So um, medical costs are about in the 800% level, but textbooks, and we all know how much medical costs have gone up, and the textbooks have gone up ridiculously priced over the last few years. Yeah, so, um, and I wanted to cite a survey of the student's public interest research group um, of 2016 that <clears throat> was really interesting. It found on average that students will pay $300 on textbooks per semester, and um, those are, uh, most of those students are also using financial aid to pay for textbooks, which um, the study also showed that those pay using financial aid actually will pay $34 more than the textbook sticker price. Um, and, and cost of textbooks has also contributed a lot to students choosing to withdraw or drop from a course. So as you, so normally so really OER um, definitely is helpful in just providing that alternative to a textbook using different materials, and which kind of goes into the other um, answer of why OER is important. Um, it impacts student learning, <clears throat> and usually very um, positively. So in this study by an Open Praxis in 2015. 62% of educators and 60% of students both agreed that OER actually increased their learning experience. Um, it also showed evidence that OER benefits student engagement and increased interest in the subject itself. Um, and using different materials in a variety of formats helps students learn and it helps their comprehension than um, using a traditional textbook like combining videos or images with specific passages in the book can lead to better critical thinking and information evaluation skills. Um, so now we kind of touched about what OER is and why it's important, um, where to find what OER materials are and where are they. Um, first and foremost, the library research guide is probably the easiest way for anybody affili affiliated with UNCG to get to. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to go and show you what our LibGuide looks like. So this is an introduction to um, our LibGuide that we currently have. It is uncg.libguides.com forward slash OER. And we have um, different examples and videos of faculty and their experiences. Just going over again the basics. Uh, the best tool I'd like to point out is kind of the OER by subject which actually goes through, um, and you'll find a list of OER repositories on each tab, but they'll have, I have specific uh, OER materials for each subject, such as African American Studies all the way to uh, statistics. So for example, in African American Studies, you can see it broken up into eBooks or lectures, tutorials, and online courses and other supplemental materials. And um, then you'll see, again, a list of, uh, general resources and repositories on the side. So we also have an updated uh, link to course adopted text by subject that we currently, um, that our UNCG faculty are currently using. And you can find that here right on this tab. So such um, education. For this fall semester, these are a list of all the textbooks that are currently being used um, through the course adopted text uh, grant program. Yeah, and those books, um, these are things that the library has um, purchased. They're not openly available, but they are available to everybody on our campus here at UNCG. Um, so a lot of the faculty have been putting these into their course syllabus and their um, Canvas um, site so that students have an op option if they do not, you know, can't afford to buy the book or they do not, you know, want to buy the book but want to have access through online, they can do that through the, these books. Yeah, so this is just a really great resource. Um, also going to OER for educators, there's a list of resources on how to design and create OER as well. Um, and then we do have uh, several good places as well to look for textbooks and other eBooks like Open SUNY textbooks or OpenStax and all three of these are browsable by subject. So when you go to each of these, usually you can find a subject field here, and you have to click on, um, so this is an example of what you can find in OpenStax. Um, it's 
all the subjects that are shown right here, and these are all books that you can download and view as a PDF that is entirely openly accessible. And uh, Open SUNY and Open Textbook Library kind of work the same way as well. So, um, and then for other tools and other repositories, um, for journals and articles, uh, I put a link here to UNCG's hosted online journals, which is a great source for finding articles and um, journals that are open, so especially for students who leave, they can still come back to these and being able to access that. So, um, and these are all peer-reviewed, um, yeah, yeah. yeah peer-reviewed journals that the faculty here on campus have um, created themselves um, and working with others. They um, have um, started their own little publishing program here. Yeah. So that's a really good resource. Um, and again, then, we have the Directory of Open Access Journals, which is similar to UNCG, but it's um, nationwide, so it has a list of other journals and articles published that's available for use. Of course, Google Scholar is another great resource to look for articles. Um, and then finally, here's a few other resources on lecture slides or tutorials and things like that. Um, OER Commons, Merlot, OpenLearn, you can browse through different materials, uh, mixed media, uh, Merlot is a common one. Um, you can search through all of their materials or you can browse by subject. And then it will usually give you different material types that you can browse um, and different subjects as well. So um, again, these are great resources for using um, other, other materials and from using uh, different formats. So and then some other ones. Several major institutions like MIT or, o or Yale and Harvard, they have online courses that are open to anyone. Uh, these courses are actually live recorded uh, that were offered to enrolled students, but then are made available to the public. So it is great for those continuing um, education or for students here that uh, want to learn more about a subject but aren't enrolled in. Um, and again, all of these courses usually um, show the full lecture that you can kind of take from and being able to, re to maybe improvise and use in your own class. So, and again, more additional resources that are great for browsing digital content, like digital images. There is the Digital Public Library for, of America, uh, the Met Museum, and the Library of Congress. The Met Museum recently released about over 370,000 images that are available in the public domain. So uh, that's really great. You can see tons of things that are actually found in their museum that are you can view from your own home. So and Library of Congress is again another great resource that they have all of their digital images or most of their digital images um, able for people to look at and students to browse. So um, we want to talk about how UNCG can support you if you decide to, that you want to um, go this route with either using open education resources or even some of the library resources that we have. Um, the library can provide um, consulting through our liaison outreach. Um, we have liaisons that can help specifically help a, a faculty member find resources and either from our collection that we have ourselves or from the collections that are out there that um, Janae just talked about. We can also help you with um, creating content uh, if you want to create some something, a digital um, something resource like a video, we have our um, DMC that we can help with that. We can also help you with um, figuring out what kind of materials you want to put on um, electronic reserves. Um, just different ways that we can help you uh, create and design your own courses to use these types of materials. And there's also a link here to a Merlot content builder, so if you want to create something on your own, we can help you that, with that. And we can also, we have partners that help you, um, and those are the instructional technology consultants in your schools. So each school, um, like the College of Arts and Sciences, has an instructional technology consultant that can help you with that information. We also, those, those consultants can help you with Canvas training, designing your course for an effective online course, 
especially since a lot of things are moving to online, we um, they are really good about helping you uh, figure out how to plan your and design your course, do the accessibility requirements, and even help you flip your classroom. A good um, and this doesn't have to be just for online courses. A good example of this is um, we had a faculty member in the um, psychology, not psychology, um, political science department that changed up her class and did more of a flipped design where she had students read and watch videos and then come into the class and talk about them and discuss them further. And she used that for her um, contemporary political science class. Because she said the book, if she had bought a textbook for the, that class, it was already out of date before they even had a chance to get to class. So those are um, some of the ways that the ITCs and the library can help you. So, and then these are just a couple links to what um, they can support or what they can do. This is kind of a cool thing that does come with um, Google Tools. It's the Sway, and this is just a presentation that the consultants sort of put together showing what they could do. So this could be kind of an example of how you can use some of your content and then put it in this format to kind of bring to your students. So, yeah. And then I just wanted to make a note on the last slide here. Um, Merlot Content Build and OER Commons, you can create and design your own things with those uh, materials. You will have to create an account, but it is free to create an account. So uh, I want to talk a few things about our success stories that we've had. The library has been working with several faculty on campus um, through a, a, a uh, mini grant series that I will talk about later. That, um, But some of these are I really want to touch base on is that we have several um, professors in art history class uh, one of the professors used a combination of Art Store and Khan Academy materials. So Art Store is something the library pays for, and then Khan Academy is an open education resource that's available. So this is a good use of um, all those those uh, resources together. We also have a professor using the web, uh, just a website called Art and Life in Africa. If you haven't seen it, it's really cool and she's using that this semester for her classes. We also have a faculty member in the counseling, education, and development um, area where she collaborated with our digital media commons to create videos and then uploaded those videos into Canva, Canvas for students. And these videos um, talked about how to do um, procedures and things like that. So it was very specific for her class. And another one I just love is from um, Bob Anneman from our anthropology class. He, um, instead of using a textbook, he found an app called the Essential Skeleton 4, which can be loaded on a student's um, mobile device, and they can um, use that to learn about the, the bones that he wants to discuss in class. And in, in, instead of having an $80 book, the app is free. If you actually want to upgrade to the the most more costly app, I think it was like ten dollars. So, uh, words from our students and faculty. Our faculty um, have I've gotten a few quotes from them. Uh, as you can see here, um, we have the resources I found are better than the textbook. That was from Jennifer Reich in the art department, and then our Heather Helms in Health, Human, and Family Services. I love this one the best. When she told her class they had no textbook required, they all clapped and cheered. And she said that was the first day of class and she's never had that happen before. We also um, have just looked at some of the this semester's mini grant. The students are doing surveys right now for our mini grants. And um, one of them came back and said, you know, I truly appreciate the resources over a traditional textbook. I connect more with those resources and it was less expensive. And then, um, you know, I enjoyed this course even more because there's no ridiculous expensive textbook to buy. So you can see that the students are definitely um, feeling the financial burden that they have and these um, instructors have realized that and are working hard to help them. So upcoming opportunities. 
So we're going to provide more textbook affordability mini grants. Um, this is funded by the provost office and the university libraries. And what we'll do is we're going to have faculty workshops in the library starting, we'll have one on February 13th and 14th from noon to one where we will talk about how, you know, go over some of this um, OER information, how to apply for the grant. And the grant application, there's your URL there. You can really, the grant is to help encourage the creation of either new materials, use the library resources. We purchased a lot of materials during a year, and those materials are available to your students anytime. And so our librarians can help you figure out what what materials we have best suits your your classes. We also um, will be um, promoting anybody that wants to apply to use the open information that's out there, plus um, a combination of both open use, open resources and also library resources. And so I hope many of you will join us um, for those workshops. There will be more information about that in the Campus Weekly and an email going out later um, in the 1st of um, January. Then uh, another opportunity is coming about is the Open Textbook Network Publishing Cooperative that UNCG has just joined. And what we are providing is two stipends for faculty to create an open textbook. And so keep an eye out for an announcement for that in the spring of 2018. This um, stipend will be $5,000 per stipend to create a textbook, and we will have an application process also for this. All right, so that's about all we have. Um, I think we might have some time for questions. Um, if you don't have any questions right now, we do have our contact information right there. Um, again, Beth really knows a lot more about how to actually um, get in contact with faculty and how to use these resources. I can help with trying to find um, examples of resources and um, like subjects, like any subject specific materials. So if there's any time for questions. We do have time for questions today, so if anybody has questions, um, this is a great time to ask. This is Amy again, by the way. All right, well, I'm guessing by the lack of typing in the chat box and the sound of silence that I hear um, that there aren't any questions at this point. Um, but as Janae said, if you have questions later, you have um, Beth and Janae's contact information on the screen before you. And of course, this webinar will be available on the um, LibGuide, which is uncg.libguides.com slash webinars um, in the next couple of days, I'm going to say before Thanksgiving. So um, thank you so much, Beth and Janae. This was very, very helpful, and um, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and that we will see you for our next webinar, which is about Google Scholar. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank Amy. You.